So guys, you wouldn't believe what's happened. I'll have to explain all the details later on, but I'm in a police car right now. So guys, I've had the most crazy experience here. Um, I'm gonna tell you guys all about it very shortly. But um, it's one of those bike touring stories that, uh, that you can only imagine in your most wildest of dreams and I can't believe I just lived through all of this. Hey guys, how's it going? It's Cody Orgel coming to you guys with a video. Today's video is me recalling my completely bizarre, crazy and incredible experience in Ireland. If you guys don't know already, I was bike touring around Europe probably a year and a half ago now. It's been a while. I think it was... Let me just check actually. Yeah, so it was like mid to late 2019. So when I was in the UK and then in Ireland bike touring. And this was a really crazy experience. So it's been a while since I posted my last video, but in my last video, I just got into Ireland and that's kind of where things got a bit weird. So I lost my helmet and I was riding without a helmet for a while in Ireland. And then I eventually got to this town, which I'm not gonna name. I stopped there and that's where I, you know, decided to buy some uh, gifts and stuff like that for friends and family back here at home. And I was in their gift shop buying like, like little island gifts. And by the time I got out of the gift shop, I was sitting outside the gift shop with my bike, sort of packing everything up, deciding where I was gonna go to next, whether or not I was gonna keep riding from this town and get into Dublin early which was my plan to then fly out and you know maybe get like a hotel there or something and just wait there for a week or so because I was a bit of head of schedule so I was sort of thinking what to do and at this moment this is kind of where everything changed and it turned my sort of ordinary island um, experience into something that was kind of bizarre crazy and a bit scary to be honest. So I must preface this by saying that Ireland, it was amazing. Like soon upon entering, like people are phenomenal. It's awesome. I just think I had that one off negative sort of travel experience that to be honest is the first kind of one that I've ever had over my four or five years of adventure overseas. Yeah, so this is my story. So uh, let's get into it. So essentially what happened from that moment of coming out of the gift shop, this guy walked across the street and he started talking to me. Now, when I first like met him, I didn't get any negative vibes or anything like that. Normally, I get like a sensation, like an intuition that tells me like, just move on Cody, don't hang around these people or this person. It's happened to me a couple of times, you know, like on my travels, um, people like invite me to stay with them or something and I just get this feeling like, oh, it just doesn't feel right. But I didn't get this with this guy, kind of, I didn't really expect it to be honest. So essentially he came over, introduced himself, and then we started talking and the pub was just down the road. And I mentioned that I wanted to try Guinness, but I haven't tried Guinness yet. And that's when um, he's like, all right, let's just go down to the pub down here. And uh, I, I'm not sure if I want to expose the name of the pub or anything, but anyway, this pub ended up being one of the main scenes of this story, if you like. Um, we went to the pub, had some Guinness. This will be my first Guinness. Ever. It's funny because I, I met the pub owner as well who be becomes quite a uh, main character in this story as well. Like it was a small like sort of small town, nice little community. At the pub we were planning like what we we're gonna do and stuff so essentially his girlfriend or wife or whatever was away and, and I guess he wanted some people to hang around with while he waited for her to come back or something like that. So essentially he invited me to his house and I was all for it because, you know, on a bicycle, you're riding, you're camping, you're sleeping on the side of the road and stuff. Someone offers you somewhere to sleep and crash for the night. Nice, comfy bed. You know, you can't complain or say no about that unless you get negative vibes from the person, which in this case, I didn't. I was just sitting you know, on the street and he came up to me, started chatting and he let me stay in his house tonight and probably the next few days until I uh, can get situated to get into Dublin and then fly out of there. But I've just had a shower and I'm clean and fresh and uh, this is my bed tonight. A nice blow up mattress. So uh, this is going to be pretty comfy. Much better than what I've been dealing with. I mean I can't complain, it's still comfy but still it's going to be more comfortable. But yeah guys, I also did some gift shopping to um, It's actually booming out there, it's very busy, like people walking around, I really like the vibes of the town. Try my first Guinness as well. 
what can I say? It was pretty good. I reckon it's better than VB, to be honest. Um, it was really good, actually. Um, so, yeah. I was going to try and save it for Dublin, but I had it here instead, and it was amazing. But, yeah. Just did some gift shopping. But the funny thing was, like, this house wasn't what I was expecting it to be. It was kind of like a run-down apartment. Let me just say this. He wanted my help to paint the house. And I was like, yeah, all right. Like, I guess I can help you paint a bit of the house because I'm staying here, you know? I mean, it makes sense, like, for me to do a little bit of work uh, in response for you letting me stay at your house, you know what I mean? So I was like, yeah, whatever. So I painted his house for a bit. Just painting. You know, we did some outdoor stuff, we went hiking. So the plan was I was gonna stay at this guy's house for a few days and he was gonna drive me to the airport. But in retrospect, I don't even think he had a car, so I don't even know how that was possible. Or maybe his missus was gonna come back and they were gonna drive me up. I think that was the case, actually. Sorry, guys, it's been a quick minute since uh, I had this crazy experience. So we did some outdoor stuff. We went hiking um, up, you know, the tallest mountain in the town and stuff like that. This is kind of where I found, got some hints that this guy was a bit, a bit loose, a bit of a loose cannon, a bit, a bit out there, you know what I mean? And I was kind of um, questioning whether or not I should stay in, you know, in this in this apartment with this guy and um, continue staying with him because he just didn't seem like the kind of person had his head screwed on. I think he might have been into drugs and stuff like that. Not that I saw any drugs or anything, but he was just, you know, talking in disrespectful manners about women and stuff like that. Um, that night, he, he was like, all right, let's go to the pub, you know, and, and do that stuff, right? And this is where everything unfolded. So essentially my bike, my stuff is at the apartment, locked, he has the key, all that stuff. We go to the pub and this is where everything escalates. So is it like rap or is it just what? And it was also funny because um, I had a bit of trouble understanding their accent because, especially this guy's accent, because it was a really thick Irish accent. Like, hey, my lady, how you going, mate? Hey, a little bit. Like, it was really thick and I couldn't understand most of the words. And I was like, constantly saying, oh, what? Hey, what do you mean? And all that kind of stuff. It was funny. But what happened? We went to the pub and this is when I realized this guy cannot control alcohol and he absolutely lost it. He he was at the pub talking to these other people and I think these other people didn't help the situation either. They're both drunk off their heads and they're just chatting back at each other. Um, and I think the storyline went something like, um, because I was there as well and me and him were sitting at the bar and drinking and then he went out to the back foyer area to smoke and stuff and that's when he started chatting with people over there and um, essentially didn't come back and he just started talking to them, right? Like they were chatting and doing all this. I found all this out a bit later on after all this occurred. Uh, they were talking about, they were chatting to each other and just like sort of attacking each other verbally and stuff. Like saying stuff like um, they were claiming he was like a pedophile or whatever because, because he had me at his house and stuff like that, which obviously wasn't true. Um, I was just staying at his house, right? And then that kind of got him on edge. There's kind of like this tension in Ireland between like their history and stuff like that. And he was on one side, they're on the other side. And through, you know, their history relations and stuff, there was just tension there as well. And essentially what happened is a, is a fight broke out. Stool chairs, like stools like these, and they're like pushing against each other like this. And I was in the middle of both the chairs trying to like push them away from each other. I was trying to be the peacekeeper here. It was so crazy. They're, you know, throwing F-bombs and um, just going off, right? And then this guy's tension goes through the roof. I managed to push him outside of the pub because, like, I was trying to just de-escalate everything and just, and just calm this stupid idiot down, right? So got him outside of the pub and he was just pissed at the world. He was just arrogant and annoyed and pissed off, right? And the pub out the front, they have, like, these... They have these flower pots, like these big flower pots 
um, hanging from like the ceiling by some chains and he just grabs them and pushes them and pulls them down and just makes a whole mess out the front of the pub storms off around the corner on the road um, and I walked with him because I was just trying to calm this idiot down right I felt like he was part of my responsibility even though clearly like you need to be the bigger person in a situation like this and claim responsibility yourself but when alcohol is involved some people just lose lose all control and the alcohol takes over and this is exactly what happened. The devil was coming out of this guy. I tried to walk him around the block and just calm him down and stuff. We came back around to the pub and by the time we got back, the police were there. So the police, they're taking information and stuff like that. They asked for his name and he would not give them his name because obviously he's probably been incarcerated a couple of times. I think they might they would have got his name and details off him eventually. They asked me for my name. I just gave him my name. Obviously, I didn't do anything wrong and I wasn't trying to hide anything. So, you know, just did that. And then the cops, they assessed everything. They went into the pub, checked the security camera, and the cop came out and he's like, mate, you're so cool. <laughs> I saw you on the footage, pushing them away and stuff. So I essentially knew I was um, all right and he was the bad guy and these two other people were, you know, two parties were obviously conflicting against each other and he was getting put in the back of the divvy, or not the divvy van, in the back of the cop car. I asked him for the keys for the apartment because my bike, all my stuff, all my possessions that I had were inside that apartment. Uh, you know, on the other side of town. And I was like, can I have the keys to the apartment because I need to get my stuff out and I don't want to be around you anymore. Just give me the keys and I'll get my stuff out and um, I'll give the keys back, you know, to the owner of the pub here or something like that. And he just wouldn't have it. He's like, he he essentially turned on me and he's like, no, Cody, you're, a, you're an asshole. You're an idiot. You don't deserve your stuff. You can go get stuffed and all this kind of stuff. And... It kind of put me in like a really ill will state and I was distraught. I was actually like, holy shit, how am I gonna get my stuff back? Like, you know, like I was thinking the worst. It kind of got the better of me and it was just traumatic and terrible. I just want to get my stuff and go. You know, one of the great things about having a bike and all your stuff on the bike is you can just get up and move and go um, and get away from all the troubles and stuff. But I couldn't do that because my stuff was inside this guy's apartment. So the cops ended up talking to him and eventually I think they just got the keys off him because he just wasn't cooperating. And this is when the cops came back that night. Um, I was still at the pub hanging out with the boys at the pub and this is where I became familiar with the pub owner, uh, a few of the boys behind the bar and stuff. And we essentially became really good mates and um, shout out to you fellas if you're watching you guys know who you are I still connect with them on Instagram and stuff it's awesome the pub owner he was the best man he really took me in which is what I'll explain very shortly but essentially the cops came back they're like all right Cody let's go back to this apartment and get your stuff out and all that kind of stuff is it all right if I get like your voice on talking yeah, and stuff yeah yeah exactly. do you want to talk about like the car and stuff so <coughs> young cooties we looked after by the police service here mm -hmm. um, during an incident. We look after all members, all the visitors, and as well as locals as well. Everybody's welcome to Northern Ireland. Mm -hmm. um, and like I repeat, he's not under arrest. We're just pretty <laughs> looking after him for a while. Yeah, yeah. Uh, while he helps us out with something. Yep. And um, yeah, Northern Ireland's not scary. It, uh, so don't let anything put you off from coming here. Yeah. We're actually one of the safest countries in the world, I think, after Japan. Wow. I've been to Japan actually. Yeah, yeah. You know, really good people, so yeah. Well, I would hope Northern Ireland would come under the same bracket there. Yeah, yeah, yeah for um, sure. Yeah. Let's see. Papa 74, Papa 74, and Papa So this is what the inside of a cop car looks like, guys. You guys still have out over? Yeah, do you have them? Cheers. So, what do you think the chances are of me getting my stuff and all that, do you reckon? That's what I'm sort of doing now. Yeah. Um, the officers that has your keys left in that van there. So that car in front of you, that's my sergeant. He's come down, he's gonna go down and get the keys off them. Okay. And then we'll we'll just escort you into the house to get your stuff or whatever. Okay. And, yeah. um, but I just wanna like give a shout out to the cops as well, the police of Ireland. Um, they, they were absolute legends. They let me sit in the back of the car. We're talking about like the Skoda cop car and stuff and how it was bulletproof and all this kind of stuff. And he even let me wear his hat as well, which was awesome. Scrap, you don't want to do How do I look? You know, a police officer and a non rate police officer. I've definitely changed these. Clean. 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 Clean
Yeah, so it's very possible. <laughs> I like it. It's a good look. At this time now, like it's late at night, it's probably like 12 in the morning or something like that. We go back to this apartment and then I walk in with the coppers. We walk up the stairs of this real crummy, disgusting apartment that's it's not furnished or anything and it's just like halfway through its building phase pretty much. And this guy's living in there. We get into the apartment and as soon as we walk in the door, the copper's like, hey, I thought this place looked familiar. And I was like, wait, what? And the copper's like, yeah, uh, oh, I was here about a month ago for a homicide. And I was like, oh my God, you're kidding me. Someone had, he's like, yeah, someone died in this apartment about a month ago in that apartment and their body was found, get this right. Their body was found in the exact room that I slept in. Now, I don't know if this guy was responsible. Obviously not because he would be in jail or, you know, or whatever. But he obviously just moved in. So he moved in after this had occurred, but still... That's just too close for home for me, guys. By this point, I was a little on edge and I was a bit frantic and I was just getting all my stuff, packing up my bike, getting all my gear, putting it in the panniers and stuff like that. Got my bike, carried it down the stairs, got out of there, finally, with all my stuff. I was happy, so I got on my bike. See you later to the coppers, thanks for your help. And then I rode back into town. So this was on the far side of town and I had to ride back into town and pass the pub again. To be honest, guys, here I am, and I'm moving on. I'm out of here. I had some other ties with this guy as well. Like, all of my clothes, apart from the ones that I was wearing, clothes were in the laundromat. I had no communication with the owner, like, to organize to get it out because he went in to do it all. So, you know, I didn't have any um, leverage there to get my clothes back or anything. And also he, I lent him like 60 bucks for the paint and stuff like that, that he was gonna pay me back for. So don't ever do that guys. Don't ever give money to people who say they're gonna pay you back. Freaking dodgy man. I lost 60 bucks from that bloke. <laughs> it's funny cause I laugh at it now, but. Uh, and he tried to message me back after all this occurred a few days later, probably trying to like give him my clothes back in 60 bucks, but. I still didn't want to talk to him because I just don't want those type of people in my life, to be honest. So yeah, let's go back to on the bike, you know, 12 or two o'clock in the morning, somewhere around there. And everyone's gone home, quiet town, but very windy. I do remember that. So I went back to the pub because it was on the road to go out of town kind of thing. And what I was planning to do by this time, it just ride to the bottom of like this big mountain that we climbed like a few days earlier. There was like this big opened camping field, a local park area where I was just going to camp and set up the tent for a few hours to get some well needed rest from this crazy event and um, get up and move on in the morning. And I was out the front of the pub looking on my map because the pub was like the only place I could really knew I felt pretty safe at because like despite all this occurring at the pub I don't know it was weird uh, I know but I was trying to find this place and I was looking at my phone and at this time I, I see this um, Audi pass by and he stops and he's like oh dude are you all right and this was the pub owner he would pulled up probably felt sorry for me with everything that occurred and he's like mate I'll let you chuck the bike in the back but he had like a sedan and it was couldn't fit or anything like that. So I was sitting out the front of the bar here and the bar owner, he, uh, he's invited me back to his house to sleep, to sleep for tonight. I am just gonna park the bike out the back here and um, take my bags with me to the bed for tonight. And I think he's gonna drive me back out in the morning for golf. Oh, what a legend. Do you reckon we find this here? Uh, take your valuables off and we'll put it up in here. Yeah? Good, yeah. You got a bed for the night. You, like, you can crash it, I don't mind. Yeah, as long as you're not fucking metal. No, 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 of course not. And what actually occurred was he let me stay at his house for like four or five days and drove me to the airport in Dublin so that I could fly back home to here in Australia. And he turned out to be the hero of this story. So Sammy, if you're watching, thanks mate, you're a bloody legend. 
Um, but yeah, I stayed at his house for a few days where I had, it was, it worked out really great in the end because I was, um, you know, sitting in there working away and getting my bike, you know, dismantled and all that kind of stuff so I can pack it in a box and get it ready to ship out. And I had to run some errands here and there, buy some new clothes and all that kind of stuff. I kind of, it was weird because the plan was they were going to release this guy the next day. So I was still in town for four or five days as he was released. So I was kind of walking around town, riding around town, like trying to just to, like keep my eyes open. And if I saw this guy again, I was just gonna bolt out of there like and not communicate with this guy ever again. I, the great thing was I didn't end up seeing him anyway. So that was good. But it was great to have like a home base to, you know, get myself organized and do all that. And then I also got some great cultural um, experiences as well. So in the pub there, uh, we went back to the pub, just like the like the famous Gaelic football match, which is the most popular one. The nice Guinness, uh, it was a really cool experience. So guys, it's been almost three days since that strange incident. To be honest, the more I think about it, it was kind of a blessing in disguise because I've been staying at Semi's house. He's the manager of the bar where all of this took place. And he's just looked after me and let me stay at his house for like the last three days and tomorrow I'm flying back home and um, he's going to be driving me to the airport and everything. He's a top bloke, he's really looked after me. Uh, but right now I'm heading to Quinn's. I've got to shout out the bar. It's, the bar's called Quinn's, it's in Newcastle here and yeah, just top people. Just really looked after me. Um, but um, anyway guys, I'm heading there now because there is this renownedly famous Gaelic football match this, this uh, starting in 10 minutes. So I'm walking to the bar right now and I'm gonna, gonna watch it. Um, if you guys don't know what Gaelic football is, it's kind of like a mixture between soccer, or football, like as they call here, and Aussie rules. Um, they use like a soccer ball and it's kind of like Aussie rules football in a way. So it'd be pretty cool. Um, but yeah, apparently it's really packed because it's a huge game. It's like one of the biggest games of the year I right hear. Um, and you can, you can never like buy a ticket to even go to the stadium because they sell out like within minutes 120,000 tickets. So uh, yeah, it's very popular. So it'd be cool to go to the bar and just like check out the atmosphere and get amongst it. Get my last bit of Irish culture in me before I shoot back home. So that's it guys, I'm walking back through the forest the other way. Got myself a sub. And it was a draw, one sixteen each. So yeah, quite an experience to see that. And uh, don't really, haven't really watched Gaelic that much, so it was cool to see that sport. And um, anyway, I'm making my way back to Sammy's place and settle down for the night, watch a few movies, and uh, yeah, rest up for an early flight tomorrow morning. Uh, it was a really cool experience. And then some of the fellas from the pub who uh, work behind the bar invited me to a birthday party there. I think it was like an 18th birthday party, which was awesome as well. So I ended up riding my bike to their birthday party. Um, and I didn't plan to like drink too much alcohol, but I ended up drinking heaps and I got drunk. Um, had a good night uh, with the fellas and their friends and stuff. And that was really fun. Um, the, the funny thing was like the, the pubs over there, like this pub, they ring like a bell and they say, all right, everyone out. And all the people who aren't local, get up and leave the pub <laughs> while the locals stay there and keep going because <laughs> i was not there fully in my head I, I heard the bell ring and they're like all right everyone get out and i just got up and walked out i didn't even ask anyone like if this was a thing or anything one of the fellas family's house and that's where my bike was and i was like ringing their doorbell and it was such a challenge to get back to semi's house which was like a couple of towns away, which was like a three kilometer ride. It was funny as, and I was like trying to communicate. I was like half conscious, like, oh, I'm Cody and uh, I'm here for my bike. If you could bring it around, that'd be great. So they gave me my bike and I'm like, all right, thanks. See you guys later. It was so crazy. I didn't even know what I was thinking, but I had been riding, I guess, like every day for the past few, like month or so. So riding was in me and I was like, it's the only way I'm gonna get anywhere is ride. 
and I'm normally not drunk ever, so I kind of didn't really think about this too much. So I got on my bike and I started riding, and it was so stupid, I probably shouldn't have. I should have just crashed at their house or something for the night, but it never crossed my mind. And I ended up riding and I crashed the bike like five times. It was pretty safe in terms of like riding not on the road, you know. It was like a bike path or a walking path the whole way back to this other place. So I was riding the footpath. I at least that conscious to, to know to ride the footpath and not on the road. And I come off the bike a few times and oh, it was a disaster. But eventually what felt like two to three times as long as it normally should have taken to ride a bike that distance. I got back to the house I was staying at and I ended up crashing in the bed there uh, in their spare room and yeah, that was a fun night, I guess. <laughs> That's what I love about traveling is just having crazy experiences. I wouldn't preferably like to have this experience again, but you know, meeting new people and drawing those human connections is one of the most amazing things about traveling, especially by bicycle. The guy's house I was staying at, he's like, oh, I wasn't sure whether or not to let you stay at my house because I wasn't sure if you're going to murder my kids <laughs> and um, and kill me too, uh, jokingly. But it turned out to be awesome because came pretty good mates as well. And next time I'm in Ireland, I'll be meeting up again and probably go on like a cruise or something like that. We'll see what happens. But it's so cool and I'm so grateful. But the story ended up turning around again and uh, it ended on a, on a happily ever after note. So that was awesome. So I ended up getting driven to the airport from that moment, we we parted ways and, and that was the conclusion of my island adventure. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this story. Um, I definitely had quite a bizarre time living through these moments <laughs> and I thought it'd be a cool story to uh, share with you guys. Don't let this deter you from bicycle touring, bikepacking or travel in general. I really think it's an amazing thing. This is probably like one of the very rare occasions that I've had a bit of a weird experience where something strange like this has happened. This is definitely like the, the craziest, most dangerous and scariest situation I've ever been in, to be honest. Please don't let this deter you. <clears throat> I just thought it'd be an interesting story to tell. So guys, it's been a hectic few days of traveling. Um, I'm just like, got the sweaty traveler on me and uh, finally made it into Melbourne. Um, just got off the plane. My bike's here, I was gonna pack it up and everything, but just missed the train to get into home because what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be um, surprising the fam, like when I rock up and just knock on the door and just like be like, hey, what's up? Just come from halfway around the world, no biggie, you know? Um, but I had to cut this box to the 15th platform across Southern Cross here and it literally was just a disaster dragging it and everything. Um, I got stuck in the airport because they wanted me to wash my bike for quarantine and stuff and that took up a lot of time. Um, the reason why I just missed the train, but yeah, I've got to wait another hour to get the next one and then should be in home and um, kind of surprise the family and I'll bring you guys behind the scenes and, and share that uh, little bit of excitement. It should be good, be good to catch up and, um, and give them a decent surprise. I reckon it's going to be really good. So a bit of an update guys, we're on the train. Uh, I got the next one. I had to tell my sister that I'm coming because she's going to pick me up from my, my hometown train station because I've got that bike box back there and it'll be just hideous to try and walk home with. But she knows and she was crying, which is always, you know, it's great to see that she loves me and stuff, which I love her too. I'm on your Naya if you're watching, the legend. But um, mum and dad don't know, so when we rock up tonight, we'll see what their reactions are like. That was the real one because I got this pain. She's not listening, but just come on. Just out of the window. Yeah. Knock knock. Hey young stranger. Mom! How are you? Hey, Tan, how are you? Hey, Jack. Yeah, you get home. Jack, who's this? Caught a plane. Are you surprised? Who are you? Come on, Hey, what's going on, little dude? Do you even know who I am? Well, you forgot. You're the most excited one of them all. 
I caught, caught the train. Oh. Thank, you. Thank you guys for watching. Give us a thumbs up, comment down below, and hit the subscribe button if you want uh, more adventures and crazy stories like this. <laughs> All right, see you in the next one. Bye.